Hey everybody got a big thumbs up. Dr. Rob here with our Facebook Live. We're going to talk all about your cholesterol test and cholesterol. I can tell you in nearly 20 years of practice, one of the things that patients ask me the most about is their cholesterol markers. And it drives me insane because I don't feel enough of the field is really using the proper lab tests. So when was the last time you had a cholesterol test? What were your markers? And what markers do you think are important? Please don't come at me with total cholesterol, HDL and LDL totally. That's not enough. We really want to break that down. But first, before we go into the tests, what is cholesterol? Is it friend or foe? Cholesterol is your friend. It makes up your cell membrane. It's truly not the bad guy that everybody thinks it is. It aids in bile salts. It actually is a critical element. It's a band-aid to injury. So cholesterol is more friend than foe. It's when specific types of cholesterol, or if you will, particle sizes, are matched with inflammation. That's when plaquing occurs. So understand that. So those markers of total cholesterol, HDL and LDL are not enough to get a really good view. It's very myopic just to use those. In addition, as I said, cell membrane, a friend, and one of the biggest misnomers is we always were told that we had a fast for a cholesterol test. It's not needed. The new literature says no fasting needed. You want to fast for a fasting glucose test, but not necessarily a cholesterol test. In addition, we're really truly thinking, re, we're rethinking heart health. Interestingly enough, I have it right here. This is from Life Experience or Experience Life magazine. Great magazine, read it all the time. It's a little commercial, but it does a great job. It's with Lifetime Gyms, and here we go. Here are some of the myths that they talked about. I thought it was fabulous. Number one, high cholesterol is the root cause of all cardiovascular disease. Yes or no, true, false. The answer is false, it is not. In addition, LDL cholesterol is bad. Well, LDL cholesterol isn't good, but once again, false. It's the particle size of the LDL that will depict if it's truly bad for you. The third one is eating cholesterol and saturated fats raise blood glucose levels. Incorrect. We now see so many high fat diets with saturated fats like coconut oil, which has true saturated fats, lauric acid, are very advantageous for overall cholesterol markers and overall health. There's a multitude of studies that say if you eat saturated fats, you're not going to have high cholesterol. So that's mistaken. That's an old myth, if you will. And finally, statins, ooh, save the lives of healthy people without heart attack. Well, the stats on or the literature on statins are very clear. They don't help avoid the first heart attack. They're great to avoid the second. If anything, a lot of the literature says that statins uh, cause the first heart attack, and without question, statins have shown us to have an increase in diabetes because they break the cholesterol marker, the, the cholesterol molecule, and within those cholesterol molecules, they increase blood glucose. There have been a lot of studies to talk about that, especially in postmenopausal women. So let's talk about some options. Let's go into some more detail. So clearly, let's talk about lab tests to consider. What do I like? If someone were to come in to me, what would I script for? Number one, fasting glucose. Love fasting glucose. Fasting glucose is a great test. It gives me a snapshot of your glucose while you fast. The markers I'm looking for are under 100. Really between 80 and 90 are the optimum range. In addition, fructosamine. Fructosamine kind of expresses your glucose level over a two to three week period. Most people don't take those tests. I like that because to me it's an intermediary test before the key test, which is hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C, which Dr. Rob likes, less than 5.5, gives me a snapshot of your average of your blood glucose level for the last 90 to 120 days with a 50% of the test emphasis on the last 30. So hemoglobin A1C is a true diabetic test marker, but it is without question one of the best markers you can do because you're going to see how blood sugar really leads you down in a deleterious path and is very disadvantageous with any kind of cholesterol. In addition, cholesterol. The traditional uh, are outdated. These H just total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, out. It is not. If your doctor takes that, you need to have a discussion and ask him why he's not going to take some of the succeeding tests that I'm going to talk about. In addition, I like cardio CRP or cardio C-reactive protein. It's a great marker to see if your 
you know, going down a path that you may have a heart attack or cardiovascular disease. C-reactive protein is a great test in that C-reactive protein speaks to the idea of tissue inflammation. And inflammation, again, is the key to allowing the cholesterol to plaque. Your EPA to arachidonic, arachidonic acid to EPA ratio is a critical element. So arachidonic acid is omega-6. For the most part, it's very inflammatory. EPA is omega-3. It's anti-inflammatory. So that ratio is critical. We want that ratio less than 4 to 1. I like it 2 to 1. Nevertheless, you can simply take a test in your office to really look at the ratio between arachidonic acid and EPA. If it's higher, you're more inflamed and you need to address that. So clearly you know when we get to my protocols and my interventions, fish oils are gonna be a critical element. And finally, one of them, homocysteine. Homocysteine is a great marker, it's a stroke marker. Homocysteine, if you have a high homocysteine, right now all the medical literature speaks to the idea of taking a lot of B vitamins, methylated B vitamins. So we're gonna flip over, we got some new other tests to talk about as we go through these cholesterol markers, and here we are. I like to refer to these as leading edge cholesterol tests. So LDLC is great because that, that's a great marker to really see what LDL poses an issue. Now, with that being said, it just came across, and now I'm gonna have to contradict myself. LDLC, in this article, this is August 31st, 2018, in the Expert Review of Clinical Pharmacology, LDLC does not cause cardiovascular disease. So what they said was, interestingly enough, for a half a century, high cholesterol um, or low LDL has been considered to be a major cause of atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease, and statin treatment has widely promoted for cardiovascular disease prevention. However, there's an increasing understanding that the mechanisms are more complicated and that the statin treatment in particular when used as a primary prevention is doubtfully beneficial. So it really said that it's not a great marker, but it said it was not a great marker when it was treated with statins. So LDLC is a marker to look for. LPA. LPA is your genetic inheritance. Unfortunately, one, uh, you have a very high incidence if you have this of heart attack. LPLA, about 63% of Americans, 20% have it, and your child has a 50% rate of getting it. So it's something you really should check for. In addition, APOB, APOB is all your bad cholesterols, which are LDL. They're all coupled into one truck. So APOB isn't just specific and LDL, A, B, C, etc. It's all together a much better marker because you also have APOA1. So the APOB slash APOA1 ratio is much better than any LDL. Everybody should ask for that test, APOB over APOA. Critical element, much better than breaking down the lipids in individually. In addition, here's your small dense LDLC. This is a great test mark. It's your particle size. You want to know your particle size. LDL is the weight of your particles. LDL or small dense lipoprotein is the size. So I could have 10 of these small guys and I could have three big LDL and they weigh the same. However, these being small are much more atherosclerotic than the big guys. So take a scale, they weigh the same. LDL is just the weight. This is the particle size. When it's a small LDL particle size, it has the ability to slide underneath the arterial wall. When it slides underneath the arterial wall, that's when you have all this bad plaquing. That's worse than attaching to the arterial wall. So the small, dense LDL is one of the worst type of cholesterol particle sizes you can have. In addition, total cholesterol. I put it in there. Well, you do want to know your total cholesterol because your total cholesterol by itself really isn't that good, but your total cholesterol in some other markers will really help you in that you want to do your HDL over total cholesterol. HDL, your good cholesterol for the most part. So let's break down H and L, real easy. HDL, H, happy, should be high. Good cholesterol. Women have higher HDL than men because they have estrogen. Number two, L, LDL, bad guys, lousy, should be low. It's a good way to remember it. Now that we have this total cholesterol marker, your HDL, divided by your total cholesterol. That's a great ratio. That ratio is a critical element to know more than just total cholesterol. Hey, my total cholesterol is 240. Doesn't mean that much to me. 
my total cholesterol is 240, but I have 100 HDL, and then I do this ratio and all these other ratios, that's really speaking to your overall true cardio profile. In addition, triglycerides. Triglycerides are blood fats. So let's go through this. This is how blood sugar can be a problem. So you have blood sugar or high blood sugar, you have high insulin because insulin has to grab the sugar to bring down your blood sugar. When you have HDL and you have blood sugar and insulin, that HDL gets changed in the liver to LDL or what we call VLDL, very low dense lipoproteins. They only last two to three days. They convert to triglycerides, which then can convert to LDL. So one of the biggest problems you're ever gonna have if you have a cholesterol problem is high blood sugar. So high blood sugar actually directly adversely affects your cholesterol markers. Triglycerides are blood fats. In addition, uh, HDL. HDL is, one, is a good cholesterol. This is a great HDL marker. We talked about APOA1. And let's go through the two ratios that I like to use often. That is HDL over total cholesterol and triglycerides over HDL. When was the last time you had a cardio profile like that? By the way, my understanding is, I think these all are covered by insurance except maybe APOB. You can ask your doctor for it. You can ask me for it. I'm happy to script for you. In addition, inflammation testing, MPO, we got it right here. Myeloperoxidase, it's an early indicator of a patient's cardiovascular risk factor. Elevated MPO indicates presence of unstable plaque in the arterial wall. So there's an inflammation marker. So if you have blood high blood sugar in that, that's gonna pose a problem. HOMA IR, it's a homostatic model of assessment of insulin resistance. Marks for both the presence and the extent of insulin resistance that the patient might currently express. It puts together blood sugar and insulin, and those two are very, once again, deleterious, adverse to overall health. And then finally, LPLA2, that's an assessment of a risk factor of a stroke. It's an enzyme that appears to play a role in the inflammation of blood vessels. So these also are specific markers that you can get if you really want a good cardio profile. Certainly you need to have this conversation with your doctor, call me, not a problem. So I talked about the problem, let's talk about the solution. Let's talk about some interventions. Intervention number one, Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diet has shown to, be, to improve cardio uh, profiles 37%, which beats statins at 24%. The Mediterranean diet is a great choice overall. What's in a Mediterranean diet? Well, they've got a lot of olive oil, they've got a lot of nuts, they've got a lot of seeds, they've got wild fish. It's relatively high in fat. Remember, fat is your friend and not your foe. The only fat that you're worried about is a trans fat. Trans fat like a donut and a french fry and the like. So we want a high fat diet. We want to avoid those sugary, poor, processed carbohydrates. In addition, keep those carbs low, especially if you're concerned about blood sugar leading you to cholesterol. So many people talk the ketogenic diet's another great choice even the paleo, whatever you do, avoid processed food and sugar. Eat good quality, wholesome food. Remember, if it comes from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, avoid it. Don't count calories, count chemicals. Things like this will put you down a path of eating a more healthy, wholesome diet. Regular physical activity. You know, just get up and move. I almost never do a Facebook Live sitting. I'm always up, I'm standing, I'm walking. You want 15,000 steps per day. You want up to 150 minutes of exercise per week. There's nothing wrong with that. How do you do that? Well, at lunchtime, you get 60 minutes, walk for 20, and you're going to get there. In addition, omega-3 fatty acids, four grams. Four grams of omega-3 fatty acids. It's a great choice. I like my omega-3s. There are some products out there as omega-3 versus a quality palmitic acid omega-7, which makes this perfect omega-10. Stick to your omega-3s and or get that special um, formula of omega-10s. Powdered nutritional support, fiber and herbs. So one, fiber is a critical element because fiber binds the cholesterol and takes it out for you to dispose. There's also some beauty in that um, the high fiber is very interesting. It doesn't allow, check this out, cholesterol to attach in the gut. So gut digestion, gut health, coming back to that, we talk about that every week, is a critical element in specific nutrients. The nutrients I like, xanthohumol, Great, has really shown to decrease blood sugar and blood glucose, hence decrease 
cholesterol markers, a great, great choice. A powder works really well. Again, you want um, fiber, some herbs, and you want some, um, my God, can you believe I'm having that? Look at, look at that, we're having that moment. Um, it'll, it'll come back to me, I promise. Probiotics and gut health. Probiotic critical element, you know, because you have those micro seals. Those micro seals are going to take out all the cholesterol and you're going to get through. Probiotics actually guard the attachment of bad things to the intestinal tract. And that's what they do. So you want to keep your gut health strong and probiotics are a critical element. And SPMs, specialized pro-resolving mediators. What a great, we have so many companies now carrying the precursors to SPMs. So SPMs are known to resolve inflammation. What was the biggest problem that we talked about? Inflammation from the blood sugar. So if we can regulate and manage and modulate the inflammation, cholesterol is not going to be as big of an issue. And finally, L-carnitine. What I like most about L-carnitine is it's the only thing that we know that takes it, we call it an uncoupling protein or taking fatty acids to the inner layer of the mitochondria. That's why it uncouples and opens up to be burned for energy and therefore the fatty acids don't plaque. So, do we have any questions, ladies? We've got two plus the three that they sent in. So, go ahead, hold on one second. Now, the nutritional support, it's gonna, it, it's gonna, poly, go ahead. I'm having a moment, guys. It's tough. Go ahead, how are you? Kimberly Nason asks, how does a person know they have something wrong with their heart? How do they, well, if cholesterol's can lead to a heart issue? It's a great question. So there's specific signs and symptoms, shortness of breath, I mean obviously pain in the area. My suggestion is if you're concerned about something wrong with your heart like that other than getting these markers, that's the next step and maybe see a cardiologist. She also asks, how do you know if you have a good heart? Well, again, get an exam. Nothing better than getting a good quality exam. There's stress exams or stress tests that will really work really well. Okay, what else do we have? How can I get these needed labs for cholesterol? How can I get these needed labs for cholesterol? Well, if you have a primary care physician and you're on the other side of the country, start talking about with your primary care physician, start talking with your functional medicine doc. If you're in a tri-state area, come to me. These are the standard tests that we prescribe for everybody. And everybody should be asking these. These are game-changing, life-saving type of exams. These newer exams are two to three times more indicative of, sh of preventing a heart attack. That's two to three times. And that was through two different medical colleges that did that study, and that was for the VAP test in 2005. By the way, well, these tests have been out since 2005. It's now 2018. It's time to take the jump. Are you going to provide a link for your protocol? I am going to provide a link. We've got Olivia and Stephanie. They will provide a link so you can go order two or three items if that's what you want. I'm very happy to do that. And you can get it online. You can get it in two days. And how new are these needed lab tests? Those tests, I think I blew that question. These needed, these needed lab tests are 2005. So they're really not new. I mean, I've been using them for 12, 13 years. I've been practicing almost 20. So, you know, like I said, uh, we need to get everybody up to date. You guys, whether it's the doctors watching or the consumers now need to ask for them. These are critical elements to overall health and great to really open up um, and see where you are, what, what your cardiovascular status is. Anybody say hi, anything like that? Valeria said hola. Who? Valeria. Hola, como esta? <laughs> Buenas martes. That's it? That's it? All right. Remember, every Tuesday, do me a favor. Like, click, and share this. Don't forget, we're doing a lot on YouTube, drrobertsilman.com. Do me a favor and subscribe. Dr. Rob, always yours in health.